In this topic, we are going to learn about homeostasis in animals and we we'll try to understand how homeostasis works. We start our lesson by defining homeostasis as the maintenance of a constant internal environment and we define internal environment as the body fluids such as blood and tissue fluid. The blood and tissue fluid form the immediate environment of cells. Therefore, by maintaining their constituents being constant, we maintain the environment of the cells being con constant. There are several organs that are involved in homeostasis, therefore are controlling the environment of the cell, namely the liver, intestines, lungs, kidneys, skin, the heart, and the cells too also affect the, cost, the, the internal environment. We look at the liver and we look at its control of solutes in the blood and removing toxins present in the blood. The intestines absorb nutrients that are digested and then put them in the blood and the tissue fluid. Lungs control the, con the, the oxygen content and the carbon dioxide content in the blood. The kidneys control the osmotic pressure of the blood and therefore um, remove metabolic waste products like urea in excretion. The skin regulates the temperature of the body fluids and therefore regulating the temperature of the cells. We know that temperature is important in controlling the speed at which enzymes work and the efficiency of enzymes. The heart maintains the blood pressure, therefore ensuring that there is utrofiltration at the capillary level of the blood and formation of the tissue fluid at that level. The tissue fluid then forms the immediate environment of all cells. The cells on their part will exchange nutrients, gases and other substances with the tissue fluid, removing what they need from the tissue fluid and taking it into themselves and therefore affecting the composition of the tissue fluid. The cells also release waste products back into the tissue fluid and affecting it is, its composition. To be able to maintain a constant internal environment, there is need for regulation and this is achieved by use of negative feedback. In homeostasis, any deviation from a set point acts as a signal that sets off the correction mechanism. Through the negative feedback, the variable factors are kept constant within the narrow range suitable for the cells. This narrow range is known as the optimum, where the cells work best.
you take this moment to explain how negative feedback works. Negative feedback works by any change of the optimum being considered as a deviation. The deviation then acts as a signal to the control center in the hypothalamus. The high control center sets off the corrective measures. The corrective measures cancel out the deviation and restores the optimum condition uh, that is the set point. To conclude our lesson today, let's compare two types of feedback that are possible in the body. We have already mentioned negative feedback. A negative feedback begins with an organ releasing a substance to act on a system. The system is acted upon by the substance and in its turn it releases a secondary substance which acts on the gland or the organ. In this case, it inhibits the further production of the primary substance or the original substance. In positive feedback, the organ releases a substance that acts on a system. The system acted upon releases a secondary substance which acts on the gland or the organ promoting or encouraging the original substance being released even the more. When you look at the two types of feedback, negative feedback inhibits further production of the primary substance using the secondary substance. In positive feedback, the secondary substance promotes further production of the primary substance. That sets a big difference between them. Otherwise, everything else is the same except what the secondary substance causes the organ or the gland to do. That's the difference between them. And with that, we come to the end of our lesson today. We will pick up from there and we use this knowledge of negative feedback to understand homeostasis in the different organs we have mentioned before.